Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, March 31st, 2024, and welcome to Drag Race C-O-L-D-R Tea Time, and it is episode number seven, where we're covering bathroom hunties and Drag Race Vegas Live makeovers. For those of you that don't know, my name is Gary, with me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone, it's Damon. Welcome enjoy <laughs> yes. happy easter apparently as we're wearing like these oh yes we very much colors. are look at us <laughs> it's also um transgender day of visibility so it kind of also works considering the colors we're wearing so look at us yeah so that was unintentional we did not plan that honestly but well i, I was planning on wearing this shirt like i had already like i, I had already <laughs> like i knew what the day I met, was and i was like i met me I'm wearing gonna... pink and you wearing blue oh well that part yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. So it's all coming together. It's all thematic because that's how it mm -hmm. works around here. But yeah, so we're going to get into the latest two episodes of season 16, talk about uh, our thoughts on these particular episodes and the outcomes because we are narrowing you know, down the field mm -hmm. and we're getting to the final queens. And I think, um, yeah, I'm going to save that thought for towards the end. <laughs> There we go already holding back. Well, you know, because there's, a, I want people to actually like watch and listen to the show. You know. Oh, that part. That's true. That's fair. That's fair. So, with that being said, you want to jump into the first uh, segment? Let's do it. Okay. Racers, start your engines, and may the best drag queen win. All right. Before we get into this, this just reminded me because of this clip. Have you been paying attention to the controversy about RuPaul and the arm? No. So. When RuPaul says this line, may the best drag queen win, we know as co-hosts classically the pose, right? Like mm -hmm. Ru has walked to the end of the runway, you know, and the music's mm -hmm. playing and then like the judges respond and she explains what the theme is. Well, she introduces the special guest judge, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. celebrity ju guest judge and, you know, then like gives the line. And for like 15 years, 15 and a half years, the arm is up. Correct. And this season, it has been picked up that Rue is not putting the arm up. There was an episode about three or four episodes ago when she said it and she was like, and maybe the best drag queen win. And like, like she didn't put any effort into putting the arm up at all. Like, and I think Alaska and Will have talked about it and I picked up on it because I was watching it. I was like, oh, what the hell was that about? I was like, she must be over this. Like, and I've paid attention since then. In this past, like, most recent episode, she didn't really lift her arm up. Like, she kind of put huh. it out, but didn't, like, go up. So I'm wondering if she's had, like, a like a rotator cuff issue. Like, like she's just damaged the muscle area because she's been, <laughs> she's doing, been doing it for doing so, it so long. <laughs> she's been doing it for so damn long. It's like, and it, sorry, doctor, doctor's orders, I cannot lift the arm above, like, shoulder height. So it has to like this is this is as far as it goes. Yeah. If I do this, it hurts. Right. Yeah. Right. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm 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 honestly not paying that much attention to that shit anymore. It's so much rope, you know, nowadays that I don't think of it. But interesting. Yeah, we've got to make. People, I know we got a couple attention. episodes left, so you pay attention if the arm is up or or not or whatever. Right. And I imagine for some of our audience, they're like, I really could give two shits. <laughs> so <laughs> they're like they're like who gives a shit about fracking mother and what she's doing or not doing anymore Fact. said it had to put it out Fact. there all right so uh that being the case let's get into the first segment um uh, put the pedal to the metal so these are our overall thoughts on these particular uh two episodes in which we categorize and pick out like things that stand out to us so uh, the first area we have serves which are the positive things that we, you know, we want to give uh, some shout out and some recognition to. And then Aww. we've got swerves where uh, something has gone awry. Uh, basically there was a road hazard on the lap. You should have avoided in the race and then uh, nerve, which could be good or bad depending on how we view it. Like you've got nerve, like you deserve all the, all the flowers or you've got a lot of nerve girl. And what the fuck do you think you're doing? Yes. <laughs> Yes, so with that being exactly. said, Damon, who are you giving serve to? So um, I'm going to give nerve or serve, excuse mm -hmm. me, to Lazy Susan. 
<laughs> okay, okay. And why um, we have, this was a very wonderful culmination of a lot of things that played in Plain's favor. I'm just going to throw mm, it out there. Okay. Um, and that's why I'm giving the serves. You gave, Plain gave her the name. Uh, Nick, I think, was the, the dancer. Mm-hmm. Grab my notes. Yeah, he's the ginger. Yeah, the ginger. The furry fucking ginger. Like, I, I like, like, it was, anyway, it was so funny because they literally shaved his chest and, like, they left, like, from, like, mid belly down, <laughs> like, furry. And I'm like, okay, um, that was a choice. Uh, and then, if anyway. you look at the outfit, was it really necessary? <laughs> like, maybe here. Yeah. yeah, like yeah, yeah this, yeah. anyway, that being said, no problem. No, it's, that's fine. Uh, but when Plain introduces Lazy Susan's name to Rue, Rue loses it. And she did. She that, does. She does. Yeah. Shit her diaper. Like, yes. <laughs> she fucking loses it. And kudos to Plain and Nick slash Lazy Susan for going with that and running to fuck with it. Mm-hmm. Because you knew it made her laugh hilariously to the point where like we said like she just looked like she was in hysterics i'm like it wasn't that funny but whatever Uh i think that's what made it very interesting Mm -hmm. was because rue really responded to that and then it kept going and they left that edit in so you realize this was a thing in the workroom like yeah she done peed herself standing there and could not get over like right. how it titillated her. And I think right. even Rue might have sort of understood that like this is not like that hysterical and yet for some reason like it just it, it really just tickled her, the her right way. to no end. Whatever it was, it hit her the right way and I was like, okay, you go ahead. And then she did a good job. Like Plain did a good job. The, the makeover was good, was solid. They looked really good. Although I feel like Lazy, there was some eye make up things that weren't quite working for me. Mm-hmm. They weren't quite sisters. Um, but the outfits worked. Obviously, um, you did a good job of hiding proportions because you were all concerned about the big bulky men being so like like petite petite like you. Okay. Um, but uh, everything else worked really, really well. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick, I think, took made did a really good job of choreographing the two of you. Um, you I'm glad you let him take a lead because you can't really dance that well, Blaine. Um, and then it sort of all culminated in this moment of you went like spoiler alert, ha um, you winning. Mm-hmm. Um, do I think you deserve that win? No. Just being honest. I might I may update my um, uh, doc later because something as I was talking came to mind and I may have to say something a little later. Mm-hmm. But that's sort of how I feel. I do give give kudos to Plain for taking that job that that moment with Rue and running with it and taking it to a fourth win, which day for you. That's, day for you. That's fair. I mean, I think that that's fair. I. I have a slight criticism about this particular thing in the last episode because there's there's this interesting like back and forth and I still don't think this has been resolved in like the the fandom I guess if it's a makeover and there's supposed to be a family resemblance some people have criticized and been like you're not supposed to be twins Mm -hmm. and I really felt that plain and lazy were like twins right and that bothered me because i was like wait are you supposed to be twins or are you supposed to have a family resemblance and then i think that's where it gets sketchy because it's like well what what is family resemblance do you know what i mean like because that's much more open to interpretation because as Uh we saw there was understandably criticism that safira and shanika Shakira. Shakira, sorry. 
I'm like, as soon as I said it, I was like, I don't think I got that right. I wanted to say Sequoia, honestly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that that wasn't family resemblance. Mm-hmm. So. And, yeah. and I, I, ooh, since, since you brought it up, we're going to talk about it too. Okay. Um, I, I totally disagree. I think they were family. They were literally mother daughter. Like that was the, that's the idea that I got from the two. Right. Right. And what they presented on the runway was mother daughter. So for you to not see the family resemblance, Michelle, Michelle, ooh, um, is surprising to me because mm-hmm. I get it. The outfits weren't the same, right? But the way they played it up is Safira was the mother correct with the ta- with the talented daughter who wants to be a dancer like you 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 did you get that did you get did you get <laughs> well right so i think this is what it comes down to production had a had a plan and that's how it went somebody had to be in the bottom and if we're talking about story arcs We've got to put the brakes on the queen that has won three in a row. She can't win everything. Where where would the fun Fair. be in that? Fair. <laughs> I'm not saying I like what I'm no, saying. No, no, I'm just no. like I, I, I get what you're saying, and I totally like that's the fact. Like that's the thesis. Like that is. I know. <laughs> that's more than likely why it happened. I mean, to be fair, out of the the pairs, Q and Luna really, I think, for me, hit it out of the park because it was so different and, like, unique that you kind of couldn't, at least in my opinion, criticize it the way you were criticizing Safira and her daughter because, like... In that case, they don't look alike, right, for Q and Luna, but how could they? Like, because – and so I thought that was a really strategic, smart move on Q's part to be like, I'm going to pick something that's very, like, all over the place in terms of, like, aesthetic and color and pattern and and whatever. So I just need another thing that kind of mimics it, and they they can't really do a whole lot about that. And Mm. I was like, hmm, how interesting. Like, that's kind of a very strategic way to play this round. Mm-hmm. in a makeover is to pick something that is so kind of all over the place, like to have another thing that's all over the right. place that uses the similar color palette and, and like, like yeah. baseline it's, gets it's you very, past. It's very much the crystal method, Burton Ernie kind of look. It's not, it's a little out there, a little unique and crazy, but it would work on anyone. Correct. Whoever, whoever she got, whoever you Correct. got, like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> right. Right. I, I'm sure you want to be a glamorous glamour queen and, and stomp the runway and then heal Sebastian. But like, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be a little kooky because that's who I am. Right. Okay. Q. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I didn't like it. Go ahead. Move I on. know. I could tell by your reaction <laughs> as I talked about, it, I was like, Ooh, David is not on the, not on the train. <laughs> David's like, Nope. <laughs> Like my anyway, I'll say it fine. Um, to me, that is is easy to put something on anybody that defeats the point of the challenge. Oh, but does it? Yes and no. I'm saying no. I'm saying it doesn't. I'm saying to me, you do whatever I, I get you what you're saying. You can do whatever I, you can to get to just get through. You don't need to win. Mm-hmm, you just need mm-hmm. to be safe. Mm-hmm. Well, it worked, didn't it? It, it, it did. It certainly did. <laughs> she didn't go home. <laughs> <laughs> so the fuck did. Okay. Anyways. Good for you, Q. <laughs> Don't worry. I I'm sure we've got we've got more coming. Uh-huh. How um you? So like you're salty. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for my serve, um, I said morphine's chain serve that runway look 
when she yes. turned the corner and I was like, oh, 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 she here to she here to, to, to take all the coin. She just gonna mm-hmm. like she just gonna constantly be doing this throughout the whole number. She picking cabbage nonstop. I was like, God right. damn. I like the only thing I think that would have made it a little better, even though I'm mm-hmm. calling it a serve, is if the the whole mid piece had been covered over in gold chain strips mm. like like right. attached to it not not free swinging just yeah. overlaid on it so it looked like that was also made of chain right it's the only thing i thought about in terms of that but man like the headdress like the, the yeah. replacing the wig with the chain look you know which is a classic fashion thing that's been done um a couple of times i was like damn I was like, she really, yeah. she really kind of like. Yeah, I'm trying to go to the did that critique. thing. So the only critique I have is I was not a fan of the panty. Girl. Um, it's the problem. That's the only kind of issue I had with this. It's the only thing that sticks out with all of this sort of rustic gold. I, I don't know how to. Yeah. I'm looking at the picture. So there's a there's a definite like gold tone to all of the chain and there's a specific kind of tone to this gold right it's not rose gold it's something else and it's all kind of looking very similar the whole like the 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 main portions of the outfit the boots everything else but then you have this light gold lame satin glittery fabric like panty and i i I immediately clocked it when she when she turned the like started the runway. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's so it's so beautiful. Don't get me wrong. Like, don't get me wrong. Everything's great. Morphine's mug, beat it. Um, that lip, amazing. But the the pity mm-hmm. being just so different than everything else. I if she could have done and I'm sure it would have been a little penny, but done like that chain looking like chain mail on that has on the shoulder. So she could have done it there or right. had something right. to cover it. Like have something connected to the body part to cover that area, like some change drip it down, something to just make it right. to disguise as much of it as she can. I it would have been it would have been a shoot. Yeah. Remind me in, in the post show, and I'll circle back on this. Anyways, okay, I, I awesome. have some very specific thoughts. Um, oh, <laughs> but anyways, her 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 look overall, that chain um look on the runway for chain reaction, it was I thought it was a complete serve. I was like, damn, I was like, she kind of showed everybody up. I mean, and don't get me wrong, like I think, uh, well, I'll come back to it in a moment. I'll, there's another yeah. look that that was really really good. Right. <laughs> so that being said, let's move on to swerves. Uh. You don't, I need you, you don't know what my no, you know, I don't know you what don't, your abbreviation means, David. What you, you go to surf or swear for? Um, so it's the Museum of Modern Art mm. mishap. So this goes back to episode the previous episode. I'm not the one that just aired this weekend. Um, Dawn and um, Nymphia's Museum of Modern Art. Mm-hmm. I could go on a while for this. I feel like that was a it was there was a really great idea and concept mm-hmm. that did not get executed well at all. Right. Um, there were so many things that could have been done. Like nine times out of ten, the whole goal is to make fucking Rue laugh. Like you should always right. like let that be your goal. If you had Daytona win the fuck out of this and like had fart sounds or did something to like give 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 this like if you're gonna go that route it's a bathroom go that fucking route take it to a hundred um be stupid and i feel like Mm. they went more like museum of modern art Mm -hmm. with a side joke of like fart a little bit of fart humor instead of doing just do museum of modern fart make it this elegant looking bathroom but everything's a fart joke right now is it possible 
producers were like, "Uh uh-uh, can't do that. It's possible. But I feel like you had a real opportunity to do something really fun and kooky and and you just missed the mark completely. Right. So, yeah. No, I I, I mean, know, and, I hear you on that. Like, there's the whole challenge <laughs> was an issue. True, but I mean, I'm kind of glad there was only three rooms, and there were six of them because I wanted it over as soon as possible. It was it was sort of a painful episode. I was just like, wait. Anyways, but no, I I agree with you. Th- there's like I there's interestingly was like the most appealing concept when you hear what it was Mm -hmm. and yet it didn't serve like it was weird yeah and then the one that i thought was like the most eh was the one that worked the best like it was the the challenge was just weird to me yeah but i think it goes to show i think it goes to show i don't know if it was bussy or maybe alaskan Willem. someone said something like it doesn't matter what you do as your theme and what you kind of like what you put together. It's how you deliver it. Mm-hmm. So like out of the three of them, team three, one, two, three, team three was the most succinct, straightforward, like like had character roles and embedded comedy in the improv, like was the most clean presentation. Right. And that's what won them as opposed to one mm-hmm. and two, which just kind of fumbled all over the place. So mm-hmm. that's really what it comes down to. It doesn't matter what the hell your theme is. You just have to be like funny and improvish and have like a clear concept of what it is that like you're presenting as far as like characters within whatever the theme is. Agreed. So yeah, there's that. Um, what about you? <laughs> girl. Oh, that. Sephira, <laughs> Geo, no ma'am. I'm just going to say this. Like, this is the Sephira stumble episode. Like, this is the one where she really kind of, like, flubbed up. When she started pulling that dress out, it was like, I've got this geodesic, like, yada yada inspired thing. And she started pulling it out, and I was like, what the fuck is that? Like, I'm just going to start here. Mama, that dress is not that good. Like, it's unfinished. There's something about it, like the gray fabric in and of itself was an issue for me. And I was like, I don't care that it has thousands of stones on it. Like, it's not done, in my opinion. Like, there's something not right about it. Mm -hmm. So she decides they're going to do this, like, you know, geodesic rock crystal, like, theme thing between her and her daughter. And then they get out to the runway and they start to practice dancing. And uh-huh. you knew that there was no way she was going to be able to dance in that thing. So she disposes of it. Now, I'll be honest. The moment she took it off and then she threw it off the stage, I was like, okay, girl. Like, you made a big production about how many stones are on this thing. And I think some of them just fell off because she just threw that damn thing off the stage. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, Maybe like you you knew there was no redemption on that outfit and you decided right. to do that. I don't know. That being said, I think she made the best call, but it was quite the swerve given the challenge. I think she had a good intention and realized the moment they said they had to create a dance, she got fucked. Yeah. Because she was planning on serving look not trying to also move right while serving look mm-hmm. so it was definitely a swerve but even yeah. even the outfit in and of itself just seeing it i was like oh no i was like it's like it's not good like i mean the Geo, ruffles no, are, are very Geo, pretty bet, no you better don't <laughs> yeah. i was like um yeah, I uh Ooh, yeah. no she better don't. Yeah, I just no, it, it it was not good. It was not good. It it just it was giving I don't even know what it was giving. Like I saw it and I remember looking at it and I'm like, I felt the same way you did. I'm like, oh 
mama, no, that, that, that's, that's, that's not, no, it's not going to work. I don't know where you felt like that could work. I don't, it just, I don't know. It's, like, the, it's the gray fabric that really bothered me the most, Damon. Right. And what I'm thinking about as we're discussing it right now is I'm like, I feel like it was an unfinished project. Like it needed to be spray painted like or airbrushed so that the gray gave you the actual like concept of like exterior rock on a geode so like if if folks that don't know what a geode is like basically it's a rock looks like a boulder of of various sizes and shapes could be as small as like a you know a tennis ball or a softball it could be bigger Mm -hmm. and the thing is when you crack it open that's when you see all those gorgeous like crystals like on the inside and they come in all sorts of different colors and shapes and stuff right but that gray that i think is supposed to be representing the outside of it it's like it was just like matte gray and there's a part of me that what like i you know, and I'm just gonna say this, like looking at it and looking at remembering briefly the the time we saw it on Safira's box. Right. And I'm like, was this supposed to be like a reveal oh. of some kind? Was there supposed to be something underneath this? Okay. That would have would have um made this better? Like I'm not I'm not I'm just there's a part of me that feels like there was something missing. Right that we did not get a chance to see because I'm, I'm going to have to, I would have to go back and look at the episode, which I don't have time for. Right, um, right, but right. like, there's a part of me that wonders because I kind of saw like the hair for these outfits and we saw them when she was talking with Rue about it and the hair of these outfits were very um, like big and like had like the crystals kind of forming within it. And I thought that was really, it looked really great. The concept I think would have been really wonderful. But I think maybe there was a reveal of some kind that was supposed to happen with this outfit. Could um, be. I mean, it was but, so volume, like it was just right. big. But it also yeah. seemed very cumbersome. Yeah. And I was like, I just don't know about this. Mm-hmm. That's so how anyways. I feel about it. It felt very off. And like I, I do, I do agree. I don't know if it was finished. Maybe it was enough. To where, like, maybe Saphir was going to be like, and now we're just going to like airbrush some like, like formations or something, or maybe it looked it would have looked different in the stage like lighting of like the runway. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, I. I, It's difficult to gauge what that would have been, but it's. I had to recognize it was definitely a swerve, and then it led to the decisions that she made. Now there's a conspiracy theory. That the outfit that Safira won, so that her daughter's dance outfit, mm-hmm. she says is planes. Right. But the outfit that Safira wears, there's a conspiracy theory that this is actually Maya's entrance. Mm. It's it's different. Like, it's very different. I it think looks I, I... similar. Yeah. But... Like, there's a screen grab of Maya's entrance and Safira holding it up against her body. And I have to say, it looks a lot alike. But then what yeah. get, what's shown on the runway is different. Right. So I don't know what the, what the story is with that. But no matter what, like, her, her deciding to pivot is understandable because I think the original concept was a swerve. Just saying. It was. Uh, so with that being said, let's move on to Nerve. Well, this will be interesting. Damon, what are you giving it her for? So, <clears throat> Q, sweetie darling, mm-hmm. um, be careful how you're phrasing things. So, there was a moment, like, you were, like, during, like, I think it was the last episode, not this one, where you got really mad that you didn't win, like, you and Plain didn't win. Mm-hmm. the um, present- drag presentation challenge, and you got really quiet. And I don't know if it's this episode. I don't – it feels like it was, but never, whatever. Right, it was It was prior to Bathroom Hunties. Right, okay, thank you. I'm trying to get – trying to write me shit. Everything's all together. Um, but you were very, very quiet. And then we come into the workroom the next day, and you, like – 
Safira asked you, because you clearly have still have this stank face going on. And she asked you, like, what are you feeling? And you indicate that you were, you know, felt that you you said I'm gonna pull it back up really quickly. I feel like you said something to the effect of deser- didn't deserve the win. Right. She said I'm, I'm, that Safira's win was not deserved. Yeah. And that was a choice in phrasing. It was. Mm Mm-hmm. Not a good one. Not a good one. No. Because it's, I mean, although, on the flip, and this is kind of why I'm giving, you had a lot of nerve saying it, especially in front of, like, Safira and everybody. Because the way it sounded, it sounded very pointed (laughs) (laughs) to to quote Willem. Yes. (laughs) seems very pointed. It was very pointed and it just was like, Ooh, that took some nerve to say that and to to, like kind of defend it in a way Mm. you did come, like we go back later and you do kind of like, you know, resolve it because Safir kind of reached out to you and you, you all kind of talked about it and you said you agreed it wasn't the way to say it, but you kind of didn't. And that's kind of where I'm at with this. Like, I feel like Q needs to be careful how she says things. So let me ask you this. If plain Jane had said it, would you feel the same way? Absolutely. Okay. Because I think it would be totally in the character that Plain Jane has been portraying True. this season for her to say that and to people not feel the same way as you might be feeling about Q. Yeah. And I only draw that distinction because I feel like Q has been much more approachable and like lovable or whatever you right. want to say that like likable as mm-hmm. an individual. And I'm like, you realize that all these top queens are shady cunts, right? Like, like they all are. Like, there, there's not a single one of them that isn't out of the, like, I'll say True. five. True. So, True. well, six, actually. But the reality is that, you know, when when there's one that seems to be the nice one or nicer than the bad one, I think some people might gravitate. And I'm not saying you are, but I think some people might gravitate yeah. towards – like, I get what like that's mean. out of character or that wasn't very nice. And I'm like, oh, but if this bitch over here says it, like, you're perfectly yeah. fine with it because she's just been a bitch I, all season. Like, I think for me, the tone, I think it was the, they resolved it in a way I feel work, like kind of work, which is realistically, they don't get to be, they're not the judge. They're not the judges. They don't Correct. get to make the decision. And that's kind of Correct. what it kind of came down to. So deserving the win Ooh, feels like no she better don't. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but that's sort of where it came down to is, um, like Rue. Rue makes the final decisions, and 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 right. it's Rue that makes the who wins and who loses and what have you. Right, and you may not like it, but it's not on the other queen. Yeah, I agree with you. We'll we'll come yeah. back to this later. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's I think that's interesting. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. That so um for my nerve uh oh oh, oh. Safira's puppy chain look. Girl, the moment she turned the corner and I was like, oh, and all the puppies just like stopped and are now paying attention out there in the audience. Like never to this day, I feel, has any kink or kink adjacent look been served as well as this one. Mm. You and I have talked about it several times. Yeah. Ladies, don't play in the pool that is not yours. Time mm. and time again, they try to serve kink or leather in some way, and it is not good. 
It yeah. is it, it looks bad, it doesn't fit well, like it's just yeah. poorly made, it is not a good execution. And she turned the corner and I was like, oh my. Now it isn't flawless. I will say no. this the makeup needed a little more help. It worked, but I feel like the black needed help with the black and the white needed help with the white to match the dress. Mm-hmm. However, the moment she sold the shit out of this is when she gets up to the front and she opens the fire hydrant. Fire her hydrant purse. Purse. She opens it and pulls out a blue squeaky bone toy and puts it in her mouth. And I was like, this fucking bitch. You can probably get <laughs> that toy for a dollar <laughs> you can probably get that toy for a dollar twenty five a dollar tree. I'm just saying it ain't a, it I've seen it several times. It's okay. But it. but it's cute, but it worked. But baby, it was mm-hmm. so on theme. Like mm-hmm. a blue bone with a red fire hydrant with a black and white like uh latex gown with the gold chain outlines. And it wasn't a gown. It, it it was it was legs. She had legs. You could see her legs. Oh, I didn't think it was Pretty legs. Sure. I thought it was gowns with it with a train. No. Okay. It's it's solid. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the picture. Okay. But it doesn't matter. Right. But here's it's the still... thing: if you know the puppy scene, which is like under the broader leather kink umbrella, what are the primary colors of that group? <laughs> Black, white, blue red oh it's over there i was like i have my puppy pride flag somewhere <laughs> like, yeah. right but yeah but that's true that's and i was stuff. like oh this bitch mm-hmm. she totally like turned it out with that and, and i was so, like and it's so well made i don't know who made this for you yeah but yeah. it looks good i like the elements i'm like i'm like I'm looking at a picture right now and I'm just like finding all the things. They're just all these little things. It's giving spot the dog, like, mm, like yeah, the, yeah. you know, with the black and white spots, loving the chain details around the spot areas. I'm just, and the fact that it has this train and it is latex, which is also um, a very big thing in certain areas of the pet community. Right. Um, Especially over in um, um, England, like puppy and rubber kind of go hand in hand often in a lot of their like, community. Um, and the way she presented it, the way it just, it's so good. I would have, I, I, I just think it, it, it gives homage to like Club Kid, Lee Bowery, that kind of stuff too. It's all of these things, like, wrapped up into a complete package that is just amazing. Yeah. Um, it, it, it definitely, in my opinion, is nerve. Like, it was, it was the quintessential, like, successful delivery of that thing. Um and was really interesting because it's highly edited. The only things that are chain are the outlines of the spots, the collar, and the hydrant, like, you know, holding he's the hydrant. A, he's got a leash. Yeah. Um, I feel like, like looking at this picture, it, I'm, I'm not sure where it's connected. And if it's connected to the chain that's around her neck, I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was so good. So good. Um, Yeah. Like, I, I mean, if I had been in the room and I saw her pull that outfit out and was like getting ready in it, I'd be like, fuck my drag. Like, like what the hell? Like the only one who could have rivaled her in that reaction was, was, was morphine. Right. And yeah. the, and the critique could have been that there wasn't much chain to Safira's look. I disagree. I think there's just enough chain. 
No, I don't, I'm not saying that it, that it wasn't enough. I'm just saying, like, if quantity became the criticism, mm. like, if, if both of them were to be presented and you were asked which one best represents the theme, mm. I could see the debate, like, especially from the judges panel, like, one one or two people saying one way, one or two people saying the other way, like, kind of feeling like that they have their own opinions as to which best serve the, the theme. So, yeah. Um, I thought that was really really good all right you ready to move on to our our next segment let's do it all right all right so this time we're going to talk about our snaps and our eye rolls aka the hug and the lows of these particular episodes um so damon what are you giving snaps to what was a high point for you so um i'm gonna give snaps to the pit crew dancers okay um, that showed up for this most recent episode the makeover challenge um it was fantastic eye candy like just to say the least i wasn't expecting the like um pulling off the pants, revealing the color, like colored, um, like short, short underneath, mm-hmm. to, like match the queens, what have you. They all came in, I think, pretty much like bearded and hairy. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Again, I don't know who who prepped them for this, you know, coming in. But obviously, they are a part of the 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 drag race family, as it were, because they mm-hmm. do the live show. But it was it was it was wonderful to see, um, and you know we know one of them is straight. They were, and married. Um, I thought that was really fun, and having all of these guys here, and really turning it out. Like, kudos to the queens for the for the makeovers, but the fact that they there was a choreographed thing and they all in a sense sort of stepped up and Mm -hmm. took the lead on dancing, like doing the dancing for them. I think that was really cool. And then, you know, obviously it wasn't a whole lot of like do something really amazing. It was just literally like a sort block of a soul train dance as it were. But, um, it was a lot of fun. It was, entertaining and it doesn't hurt that they were it was good to look at them like just before everything even like kind of after but like um um sebastian came on the scene and i know you're going to talk about him in a minute but sebastian came on the scene and i'm done like (laughs) hi daddy like (laughs) (laughs) jim and i were watching and um, they showed Sebastian. I went, oh, it was very audible. It was very, it was very clear. Like someone had caught my attention. <laughs> my favorite part about uh, um, Sebastian being there was Q's like, like reaction and getting called out by Rue. Like Q, your face is pretty red, and she was like, what? Like <laughs> she was really <laughs> embarrassed. And then my favorite part of the, of the back and forth is she's like, you know, you know, you seem pretty flustered or whatever. And she's like, oh, well, you know, he just he reminds me so much of my husband. And Rue says that's the best answer. And I'm like, but that is the answer. Mm-hmm. Like, I think Q was being honest in that moment that like mm-hmm. Sebastian remind her a lot of her own husband. And like that was because Q kind of like gave us the impression like that was of the pick of the of the dancers. That's the one she wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I thought that was really comical, like that little moment where Rue was acting like, like, good on you, kid. Like, that's how you play television. And Q I think, was just honestly like he being honest. Me my, she was just being he honest, reminds like me of my man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, oh, just overall, like. We've had some interesting like makeover challenges over the years. Mm. And this one I think was one of the highlights for me. It, it definitely stepped the game up a little bit because mm-hmm. you knew automatically they all know how to move. 
Yeah. Like they understand fluidity. They understand body. They understand posture. Right. So the typical makeover challenge points get diminished. And by points, right. I mean like the things that you have to focus on. Mm -hmm. Although there Walking was an interesting in. twist because like size of feet. Yeah. Girl. That was the thing. I mean, we all know that like any drag queen kind of has that sometimes has that issue. Right. Um, Provided the shoes. Yeah. I, th I think there was some, there was some heavy handed production shit going on in this episode. The whole tucking conversation, mama, that was all for camera. That was not realistic <laughs> in any way, shape or form. Not, a, not a lick of it. I was like, that was all just because we have to have the conversation because they're men and or at least they're male presenting. And so we presume their genitalia and we have to talk about it because the audience right. always wonders, what do they do with it? Yeah, like it, it was that that was a whole <laughs> planned thing. And I was like, whatever, get it over with. Yeah. And I kind of feel like the shoe conversation was another piece of that. It had to have been. I'm like, it had to be. Because to is. be fair, like, the edit that they put in, mama. Nick's big old feet in that. <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> How bad does it look? Girl, it looks bad. It looks, it looks downright awful. Yes. And we all know it. We all know it. We, we just tried. We, we are just kind of like, mm-hmm. It'll be fine. They're not looking at your feet. Totally not. Mm -mm, never. No. Nah. Uh-uh. Right. No, we're good. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Gary. All right. So I want to... <laughs> You and I are probably on two different sides of this coin. I'm, I have two things. I'm going to give um, snaps to Q's self-awareness. Okay. And here's why. When I saw it going down and Q got quiet and Q pulled back, it didn't say much. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, good on you, girl. Because yeah. what you don't need to be is a nasty cunt. And so I think she was well aware of her feelings and was like, I need to not do this. I need to yeah. not get ugly about this. And I need mm -hmm. to not start spiraling. Right. And so and her attitude definitely changed from the end of the day to the next day. Right. That does not, I am not saying that erases her oddity of doubling down <laughs> on the not deserved comment. Like I was mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I was like, I mean, there was a part of me that was like, okay, we get it. Like, like, you, really, like you really feel yeah. a certain way about and, this. Yeah. And I agree. I think her self-awareness, especially, like, when they came back in the workroom, like, clearly, she was in a moment. Like, clearly. She had been in a moment from when she called, got called safe. Right. She was... And, she was compact pressed yes. that moment. Like uh -huh. the look on her face, it is like the, um, oh my God, it went out of my head uh, from New York. Jan. Right. It was like the Jan moment. Like yeah. that face was such an echo callback. And you yes. were like, oh, here we go. And it, yeah. and her whole demeanor changed. Like her body mm -hmm. posture changed. Her enthusiasm uh -huh. changed. Like mm -hmm. for the whole rest of the end of the episode, coming into Literally, the back of the work. Like walking there with the like vote signs being like, oh, yeah. Almost stomping. It just felt very just. And, but you knew, like, this is someone, like you said, self awareness is very much the case. Like, Right. I'm I'm having my feelings, right? And to, I mean, I'm, to be fair, Q invested so much in that particular look and the runway mm -hmm. that she thought she had it in the bag, and she did to a certain point. And and I think that's what this journey is showing us is like you can feel you've dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, you've done everything that needs to be. To me, this is like pageant. Like, you show up and you expect to be in top 10, right. top five. And that's the problem. Like, you make top 10, you make top five, and you make top three. And then you find out you're runner-up. Mm -hmm. And you have to move through that. And I think she... 
tried to do so gracefully. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it was great, but I wanted to give her recognition for being like, I am not happy about it and I am not going to hide it, but I am also yes. not gonna, going to like to react. And well, respond. and worse yet, like make all the focus on her because she was like, you know, going to throw shit across the, mm -hmm. you know, the room in a temper tantrum and yeah. whatever, like, cause I, and I hated that plane recognize this, recognize that Q was in like this like mode and was trying to get her to speak. Mm. And I think some of the, maybe the other girls too, but I remember playing specifically in that moment. But I feel like this is a queen that knows herself, speaking on cue, and knows that at that time, whatever she said, whatever she was going to do right. in that moment would not have been good, would not have been positive, would not have been, um, would have been out of, anger and and frustration and right um shows not to let that happen shows not to like right let the emotions let everything get the better of her to where she would have some, said something potentially even worse mm -hmm. says something that could have been awful well, and, and I also want to say I'm proud of Safira for recognizing she needed to give Q space because for television, she could have gotten into her face a little bit and been like, you know, what's going on? Why ain't you talking? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm -hmm. but I think, you know, Safira, as we've kind of discussed, has been the mother figure of this particular season. She very well, I think quickly picked up that Q needed space and needed mm -hmm. to just like process and go through it in her own head and wait and see how it comes out. Right. And I think that's why it, it did play out the way it did. Um, and, and to me, that shows a lot of maturity. I'm right. Because I think what people don't realize, and I'm hoping some, some people might've picked up on this, like you do not have to be your emotions. Like, you, you can be a mess all up in your head, but you don't have to pr put that out into the world. Like, you can be angry, and you can be frustrated, and you can be mad, you can be upset, but you don't have to, like, act that way. Right. Like, you can you can choose your behavior, which is separate from your feelings, believe it or not. But that's, but that's a certain level of, like, understanding about yourself that, like, in a moment, like, you can be embarrassed, but you can still move ahead. You can be sad and you can still put a smile on your face. You can be mad and you can like still have the fortitude or the strength to like go through something and not show all your cards. And I think that's what Q was doing was like she was like, nope, not gonna like as much as like I really want to lash out and say, you know, some ugly shit or whatever because I'm in my feelings. I'm just not going to say anything. Mm. And I think. Safira had enough wherewithal, maybe enough maturity, enough experience, whatever you want to say, to be like, give the child her space, let her let her have her thing, because trying to offer help in this moment will not be helpful. It won't yeah. be received as helpful and could make it worse. At least that's my mm -hmm. my theory. So uh, my second snaps I want to give to is Sebastian's return. Mm. So. I say return because I am absolutely positive we have seen Sebastian before. And I believe Sebastian has been a part of the pit crew in the main season in the past. Mm. But it has been quite a while. Um, and I can't say where or when. I'd have to like research it. But I'm absolutely positive that we've like seen him before. In the, in, and very briefly, I want to say for like a season. Mm. Um. And so I thought that that was really nice to see, quote unquote, a familiar face um, in that aspect. So uh, I was also intrigued, like we got a little bit of flavor of the different dancers, like to learn a little bit about them. We learned a lot about Nick through Plain Jane and him having a similar storyline um, right. and, and stuff like that. But like and then we found out that uh, Morphe's dance 
like makeover partner is straight. That was funny as hell. Um, or no, oh, it, it was Nymphia. It was, it was Nymphia. That's right. Yeah. It was Nymphia's. Like, I forgot because then I remember Nymphia fell on the ground. She had to be all dramatic about it. Um, that poor girl. She was like, <laughs> I think she was starting to feel that she was being sabotaged intentionally by production. <laughs> like, like that. Like every 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 layer was revealing more and more that was another challenge for her. And I was like, oh boy. Um, yeah, like I, I don't know. It uh it was intriguing to me. And then to find out about Sebastian and like the I was intrigued that Sebastian couldn't kind of not be masculine. Like I found mm-hmm. that I don't know, there's just something stimulating about that. Like to watch him and like to even see him on the runway with Q. I was like wow, you kind of can't not help be that way. Okay. And the reason I say that is because I think a lot of people presume that when you're gay, you're effeminate. Right. And so you're kind of girly, you're kind of soft, you're kind of right. like, you know, like there's just certain aff- like affectations or certain things. And I was intrigued that like while Sebastian is gay and has a partner, I believe he said, um, that he – he definitely has a certain personality and a certain presentation. He kind of couldn't like move away from that completely. Right. Um, I mean, I think that happened his... to all of them a little bit. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I found that kind of interesting. So have you been it's researching while I've been talking? <laughs> no, kind of. I'm looking, trying to, I, I found, I was trying to find out Sebastian and find out if he was, if he had been on the show before, it doesn't indicate that he's been on the show before. It only says he's done. Um, he was a dancer in episode 16 of this is us season two. And he was actually in the film magic Mike's last dance. Hmm. Um, in 2023, Sebastian also had a bartender stint on Bravo's watch what happened lives with Andy Cohen. So he's been seen on things. Right. But it didn't mention specifically like he was a um, previous like pit crew, which well, I would assume it would say. Maybe I'm wrong, and maybe like I've seen him in something else that I is mean, only for adults. I, I don't know. I, have, um, I don't mind. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I don't mind seeing him in things. Like let's just. Like if he's like, there's some pictures from his Instagram that are on this um, uh, article. Ooh, okay, I am so distracted. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I I'm getting very much that masculine vibe off of him, especially in these like just quick pictures, especially because in a lot of these he's got the more mustache. Mm-hmm going than actual um like the beard kind of that he had in the episode right so oh. that being the case what about uh eye rolls damon what are you mm. eye rolls for okay <laughs> i give eye rolls and 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 it's no i put the devils into details and that's not me saying anything like being cheeky i'm literally talking about the devil uh, the hell um, bathroom that Q and um, Morphine did in the previous episode. It was terrible. Um, the the idea I was talking about the Museum of Martyr Farts earlier idea not landing. This one just crashed and burned. There was literally nothing there. There's n- other than the flames and everything else. It just didn't make sense, and it didn't help that Q and Morphine did not play well off each other. There's a lot of start and stopping in their improv. There's a lot of just messiness. And I know Morphine's not the best at improv, it seems like. But overall, it just was bad. It was so bad. Mm -hmm. Um, There were cute moments. Like, I, I appreciated the toilet, like, seat that had, like, the teeth spikes going up that you couldn't really sit on it and um the toilet paper and the toilet paper being just out of reach we've all had that like mishap they i think they played too cerebrally kind of like what happened with 
the the mo 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 mo, mo part. Um, one is that y'all went, you had the humor kind of laid out in front of you that you could have gone with, and you chose to be more like thought into it, put more thought than you needed to in this one. It, mm-hmm. You just, it just, and it just didn't work. Those awful dresses, those awful dresses. I don't know who gave you those, but like. Those need to be burned as well. Just it just these little like they were so fucking simple. Um it it okay. It looked like a like a party city costume dress. Like I'm a sexy like devil. <laughs> like all you needed were the fake plastic horns. Like that's all that and the little pitchfork. And I, it just it just wasn't pretty. Right. Although, I did appreciate the nod to, like, the potential tickle torture thing. And, like, um, I'm, I'm going to assume that the guy was um, had it in that little um, Speedo thing going. He might not have been. According but... to Willem, that is all natural. There was no padding and there was no accessories to make that happen. Okay, so it just was there. Okay. Hmm. According according to Willem, he is meaty. Okay. <laughs> Willem Willem has an affinity for for dancers. Ah. And so and it's almost like Willem's made it a personal like quest to bed every pit crew person that has ever been on RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't think that's the truth, but it sounds like it, the way Willem talks about all of, because she knows yeah. who all of them are by their name and their Instagram and their modeling. And and I'm like, damn, girl. Like, But maybe Hollywood is that small that all the gays, you know, kind of know the gays. I mean, it's possible, I don't know. but it was just, it, 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 it was, I was like, okay, that's that, that was, that was the highlight of the the whole room was that moment where you had the guy and you had clearly like the the bulge and i was like okay you go go ahead if that's your kink and you like being tickled it, it's showing for sure yeah and then yeah. finally i realized i had two that's okay um mm, who should have won um, in this most recent episode, I don't think Plane should have won. Okay. I, I don't think Plane should have won. I think it should have gone to Nymphia. Wow. I think it should have okay. gone to Nymphia. Because... There's a, there's a like again. They were they were kind of twinning it, and that's sort of not really what it was supposed to be. And don't get me wrong. Lazy Susan and and Plain Jane did a really good job. Mm-hmm. I'm not discounting that. I feel though, that Ninfia did a better one with her makeover, with the looks. And the only thing you're quote unquote clocking her on is the fact that she wore yellow again. And I'm like, is that really a problem when the whole idea usually with this show is branding and we've known Nymphia to be like the yellow banana queen? Like we've 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 seen this. We've seen mm-hmm. it a lot. And I get it. It has been a lot. But in this particular episode, where it is literally drag family and literally makeover for somebody, and your idea is to make someone your drag sister mm-hmm. or what have you, then why wouldn't you go with your signatures? And then add something to it. FYI, yellow and purple are complementary colors. They are meant to go together. Art, art school and sit there right um and just it, again it just sort of bothered me that that wasn't recognized not the 
complimentary color thing, but just that it looked so good together and the outfits looked really good. They weren't, a, they were kind of leotardy, but they, it wasn't just a leotard. It masked her, her um, guy's um, more masculine figure, you know, you know, proportions. It was, it was a very top notch look. And it was a very well done thing, and it was very good. And I love like the bird nod and all that stuff. I think it all kind of worked together, and I felt it was the win. It could have been the win for her, hmm. but that's just me, right? Um, the the nothing Nymphia for wearing yellow at this point in time is a is low hanging fruit. Fair. Like, find something else. But when there isn't anything else to critique, what are you going to pick on? Right. Exactly. We've seen many a times that the judges sometimes pick on random shit, and you're like, yeah. oh, is that what you came up with? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It feels, again, like I said, it felt very unnecessary. And that's sort of where I'm at with it. Hmm. Not that it could have gone either way but i think you're you're clearly setting up the platform for your your front runners right like i don't see um i don't see safira are playing not being in the finale unless something catastrophic happens in this next episode but anyway Speaking that's, that's of, <laughs> yes. um, so before we wrap up, uh, a couple of things. I want oh. everyone to be aware that um, we're going to be delayed out. So we've been pretty much going every two weeks. Um, we are not going to be this next time because based on what we know, and it's mm -hmm. still looking this way on this one uh, website, we have three more episodes to go. Mm. So to let our listeners and viewers know, um, there was a website that I found when we were last together two weeks ago. I think this was after we were off air. This was either after we were off air or during post. Yeah. So there's three more episodes to come, uh, 14, 15, and 16. Um, 14 apparently is called Booked and Blessed, which would be the top four. Then we go to episode 15, which is the reunion. And here's the big scuttlebutt about that, if folks haven't like read this up online. There has been no announced finale recording mm -hmm. and the reason behind that is supposedly the writer strike last year was a big issue and they decided not to do the live finale this year mm. at least from what we understand so far and therefore the reunion actually was pre-recorded as well as the finale mm. and rumor has it that the reunited episode is actually a lip sync Lala Perusa Smackdown competition between all the eliminated queens. So if this is all the case, then this coming Friday, the fifth is the booked and blessed episode 14, where they may or may not eliminate a queen. Right. They may do a double Shantae and keep it at four, or they may eliminate a queen and take it to three for the finale. Then we've got the reunion on the 12th. And then the finale is on the 19th. Right. And if it's true that the reunited, the reunion and the finale have already been pre-recorded, then it just simply plays out. Um, which means the finale was recorded in the studio, like an All Stars is. Mm. Yeah. So. Which would be interesting. Right. So we so we don't know quite what that's going to be, but basically this is last we knew the schedule, and with Damon and I and our personal schedules, we decided that we're going to do one episode after those three so instead of doing like two and then doing another one for just the finale we're just going to like do them all together so i'm just letting all of our listeners and viewers know that we're not going to be back for a couple weeks so like normally it's two weeks but it'll be an extra um weekend between for that so that being the case um before we get into post show uh and wrap up to be fair to everybody we have four queens that are left nymphia plain q and Safira. Um, it's kind of obvious that Saphir is in the lead. She has the most in terms of earnings and she and Plain are tied with four main wins each. 
technically Sephira has too many wins and Plane has one. Um, and then it goes to Q, who has had two mains um, with the most earnings, but then Nymphia has two mains and two minis with uh, the least amount of earnings of the four queens that are remaining. So this is where our top four kind of line up at. And I don't necessarily think anyone's surprised by this um, in this moment because usually the queens that have the most in terms of like prizes and earnings and winnings like in general make it to the end so yeah we're we're kind of looking at who's going to be in these particular um positions at the end and i think that poses a, an interesting matchup so as i was saying if they're gonna eliminate a queen and go to top three it'll be interesting to see how that plays out um the booked and blessed episode that's coming up next that we got a preview for they have to write a memoir and that seemed to according to the edit if i recall correctly i think that stressed out nymphia so that could be a challenge um which is interesting because i can't remember if it was her so, David, in the preview for next episode, was it Nymphia or Q that seemed stressed by the idea of writing a memoir? Ooh. I thought it was Nymphia that kind of got stressed out about that. It may have been Q. Okay. I feel like it was Q. Well, as I was just saying a moment ago, I was like, I thought it would, it might have been Nymphia. But then I, I, as I said it, I was like, but she's the one with the marketing, like the, not the marketing, but the, like, fashion like Nymphia, background yeah but she, i mean she's yeah. well-rounded she there isn't a damn thing she practically can't do right. so that's where i was like well maybe it was cute that like had the the stress about the it being a memoir i don't know so mm. at the end of the next episode we'll end up either with the same four or a top three right um but it's pretty and obvious it's, go ahead and it's interesting because what what we're saying the rumor what the rumors are saying since they're not doing what they normally do, mm -hmm. which is the big live show and all that stuff, where they do like the the spin thing and all that, um, they have the potential to go down two three. Correct. Because if they're doing it at the studio and like whatever, it goes harkens back to like older seasons where there wasn't all of this big pomp and circumstance about the finale. Well, right, because so you don't have to have the competing bracket, especially if the mm -hmm. rumor is true that the reunion is a, is a SmackDown, because then that's like all the mm -hmm. lip syncing heavy episode. Yeah. So it turns into the three of them just need to either do the music video mm -hmm. or the three of them have to do their own thing separately, right. one after the other, so they get compared side by side in essence. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go, but... Um, in terms of like the, the totals of the earnings, it's kind of becoming obvious, and it's also the same case for wins, that it's Safira and Plain Jane as the two like, right. top contenders, which I find very interesting if that's how it really plays out at the end. Good Lord. What? Sorry, I'm just looking at how much cute um, Safira has already. Oh, I know. So I've been kind of keeping track as we go along, like, as to what the earnings are. Here's the fact that really surprises me. If you add up all of the earnings, cash and, like, values of, of winnings, like, because um, uh, Plain Jane got $5,000 worth of uh, Anastasia makeup product in right. value. Uh, and then uh, Zunami also won the trip to Spain, although she can't take it. Um because she's a uh, DACA. So mm -hmm. rumor has it that she was going to gift the, the trip to somebody else, but then I also heard a rumor that she was going to be given cash value. So I don't know what's happening with that. That being said, if you add all of this stuff up, you come up to over $90,000 in, in cash and prizes, which is pretty close to the $100,000 grand prize winning for many years of the show. Right. <laughs> and that's not even the final winning. So right. I find that I find that interesting. But yeah, so if there is kind of a bracketish way that this ends, it sort of becomes obvious to me 
that it could very well be set up that it's plain and Saphira against each other as the final two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be interesting. I don't, and looking, I mean, we can, we, we'll talk about the post show, actually. We'll, we'll do predictions post show. Let's okay. do predictions post show. Okay. So with that being said, uh, if you have thoughts about the episode or thoughts on our thoughts, you, there's plenty of ways you can let us know. You can visit the blog, CobsOutLoud.com, leave a comment on the posting on there. You can also send us an email, CobsOutLoud at gmail.com. You could uh, call us, leave a voicemail. We could play it on the show or not. Just let us know. You can call 361-265-8255. That's 361-COL-TALK. Um, we're basically on most of the social media uh, main items. You can type in the word Cubs Out Loud. If you want to join our Telegram chat, um, you can type in uh, tinyurl.com backslash T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M dash C-O-L-D-R. If you want to know when, uh, when we're going to be doing our live shows for the main uh, Cubs Out Loud portion, you can go to tinyurl.com backslash calendar dash C-O-L um, to see that particular calendar. It's mostly uh, on Sundays, sometimes uh, in the morning, sometimes in the evenings, although we try to keep it pretty consistent. And if you want to support us, there's several ways you can do that. You can go to Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud and you can get merch. We've got t-shirts. We've got cups. We've got mugs. We've got uh, oh, come on. <laughs> shower curtains and all sorts of random things. Um, David and I happen to be rocking um, our uh, Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo, which is our Cubs Out Loud bear head that's roaring with a crown and it says Drag Race. Um, as you can see, the t-shirts are available in multiple colors. There's uh, the mug that you can get as well, the coffee mug that's called Two-Tone, uh, because the handle and the inside actually match in this case. Um, and there's other items that you can get as well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing at David, like, showing off the mug. See that pretty pink inside? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Demonetize. So um, <laughs> like we were making money. Though. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of things over on Zazzle that you can get. Um, and they have sales on there pretty frequently. So even if you don't buy something right away, if you sign up, create an account, you'll get on their email list and then they'll kind of tell you about their, their sales all the time that are happening. Um, that being said, you can also just join our Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud and become a patron um, for a dollar or more a month. Um, and you get uh, our extended versions of the shows, including the pre and post show. Or if you would just like to make a donation, you can go to paypal.me uh, slash Cubs Out Loud and you can leave a one time donation to help keep the lights on, as we like to say around here. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, you can also find us pretty much anywhere that podcasts are available. Cubs Out Loud Drag Race is its own RSS feed. So if you like listening to podcasts, you can actually um, hear just these episodes specifically um, by looking for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. That said, Damon, if people want to get in touch with you, where would they find you? If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most very related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter or pup umbra79 on Blue Sky. Both of those are not safe for work. The safe for work stuff, you can go to DMA Gamer, Gamer 79 on TikTok or X. Twitter. <laughs> Literally pause in the thought process because I said TikTok first and I was like, well, fuck. <laughs> That's okay. But anyway, you can find me. I'm all over the place. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gabriel73. I do have a Twitter account. Um, that's Garebear73 D R A G, where I kind of like sequester and put everything that's uh, drag race and drag adjacent over there, just simply because it makes it easier to avoid spoilers. Um, right. So feel free to reach out to us Which if you'd like to. Yes. It's always good because um, I didn't get to see last week's episode on Friday. I had to wait until the following day. And baby, when you get on like Twitter, like the queens are already like saying shit, not just queen, regular random people, like fans and what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is so hard to not be spoiled on stuff. That's why, why I created a different at... Twitter account. See, yeah. I was sick and I, tired I of these motherfuckers I follow for other adult other reasons. reasons. <laughs> like commenting on the Drag Race episode. And I was like, that's not what I'm here for. Damn it. <laughs> right. So with that, uh, we will be back in a couple of weeks. We'll talk about it. Uh, if everything plays out as expected, we'll be back for the finale. and We will have a winner. So we'll discuss uh -huh. that then. 
So until then, have a good one, children. Bye. Bye.